All right, let's get right into it. We hear all this talk about the AI gold rush, right? But what about the people who are actually building the shovels and pickaxes? Today, we're going to look past the hype and dive into the real, tough problems that the next wave of top AI founders are solving and how they're building the next billion-dollar companies because of it. You know, this quote just frames the whole conversation perfectly. The founder of Korea, which is an AI creative suite, he basically says that building a powerful AI model, well, that's like inventing the car. It's impressive, sure, but in a way, it's the easy part. The real challenge, the really hard part, is dealing with the traffic, all the messy, complicated, second-order problems that pop up the second that technology hits the real world. So what are these traffic jams in the world of AI, you know? What are the super frustrating unsolved problems that are literally keeping the smartest founders up at night? Let's take a look at the exact challenges that became the bedrock for their companies. Okay, let's start with a problem a lot of us probably have sitting right in our living rooms. Smart speakers. They were the third best-selling consumer product last year. I mean, half a billion of them were sold. And yet, let's be honest, the experience of actually using them is, well, it's often pretty terrible. And this right here, this gets to the absolute heart of it. We've got these incredibly powerful little devices, but we're forced to talk to them like robots using this stiff, command-based language. There's no real conversation, there's no personality, and there's definitely no community around it. It's just this huge gap between the promise of what voice AI could be and the clunky reality we have now. Now, for a question that's meant to grab your attention, the founder of a company called CoFrame, they build adaptive websites, he makes this argument that the internet as we know it is basically dead. What on earth could he mean by that? Well, his point is that our entire experience on the web is fundamentally static. Think about it. Every single person who visits a website sees the exact same thing. It's this one-size-fits-all model, and it totally fails to deliver an experience that's dynamic or personal or that adapts to who you are and what you actually need in that moment. All right, let's switch gears to a huge technical problem. We see all these mind-blowing demos of AI models doing incredible things, but then when companies try to put them to work in the real world, you know, for tasks that actually matter to their business, a shocking number of them just fall apart. Why is that gap so massive? And here it is. This is the critical point. The founder of Fedris AI, a company that's all about AI reliability, he puts it so clearly. The problem is the models just aren't dependable. He has this great question. Would you ever use a delivery app that only gets your order right 45% of the time? No way, right? Of course not. And yet, that's kind of where a lot of AI agents are today. When they mess up, some poor human has to step in and clean up the mess. And believe me, the list just keeps going. Founders are jumping in to tackle the absolute nightmare of messy, unstructured data inside big companies. They're working to fix AI voices that sound totally flat and emotionless. And they're trying to simplify the incredibly fragmented and complicated process of just getting access to all the different language models out there. Okay, so we've laid out the problems. Now let's meet the pioneers, the startups that looked at these exact frustrations and saw massive opportunities. It's time to see how they're turning these challenges into real, actual products. So for every single one of those big, hairy problems, there's a pioneer with a solution. Those clunky smart speakers? That's what Open Home is fixing with an open source alternative. The quote-unquote dead internet? CoFrame is on a mission to make it adaptive. And those unreliable AI agents? That is Federus FAI's entire reason for existing. From messy data to robotic voices, a new company is stepping up to solve each one. But look, these aren't just clever ideas that are just slapped on top of the same old tech. The solutions these teams are building, they're powered by some genuinely new and really unique approaches. So let's take a quick peek at what's actually under the hood here. This chart just perfectly captures the huge philosophical shift that's happening. The founder of Federus AI, he argues that for so long, the whole industry has been obsessed with building smarter models, ones that can do like PhD level math. But what businesses actually need are reliable models. They don't need a model with a slightly higher IQ. They need 99.9% .9 reliability for the boring but critical stuff, like filing your taxes correctly every single time. And the tech behind all this is just fascinating. I mean, we're seeing teams building these massive models without transformers, which is the dominant architecture, all to find a better efficiency. Open Audio created the very first instructable voice where you can actually direct its emotion and its tone. We're seeing everything from forensic data analysis to using crypto incentives to build real-world solar farms. It is a completely new playbook. So, okay, the ideas are great, the tech is new and exciting, but is anyone actually using this stuff? 
And the answer to that is a huge resounding yes. These companies are not just concepts on a slide deck, they have serious real world traction. So let's start with Korea, the AI creative suite we mentioned. They've raised an incredible $25 million. But what's even crazier is that they did it with a tiny team of just eight people. It just shows you the insane leverage AI can provide. Now check this out. Open Audio, the company making those expressive AI voices. In just four months, four months, their annualized revenue shot up from 400 grand to $5.5 million. I mean, that's just meteoric growth. And it's not all just about the money either. Open Home, the platform for smart speakers, has already pulled in over 10,000 developers who are actively building things in their ecosystem. That's how you build a powerful, lasting network effect. I absolutely love this story from the founder of Upside. That's the company cleaning up messy enterprise data. So they'd been building in secret for a year. And then his co-founder makes just one small post on LinkedIn and it completely blew up. A tidal wave of demo requests came pouring in just because people are that desperate for a real solution to this problem. And that hunger is turning into some seriously big name clients. Korea had Fox Broadcasting airing an ad made with their tool just two days after they signed up. CoFrame helped generate $20 million for the largest travel company in Europe. These startups are landing massive clients, including a $400 billion enterprise in India. We're talking about a who's who of customers validating these new tools. Okay, so we've gone through the problems, we've met the pioneers, we've looked at the tech and the traction. But what's the big picture here? What is all this telling us about the real next wave of innovation in AI? And this quote just, it just nails it. The founder of Federus AI says it all right here. Reliability is revenue. The next billion dollar apps aren't gonna come from a model that's a few percentage points smarter, no. They're gonna come from unlocking practical, real world use cases by making AI dependable enough to actually run a business on. So here's the big takeaway. The next generation of AI unicorns, they're not just focused on building bigger and better foundation models. They are laser focused on making AI usable. They are obsessed with reliability, with integration, and with solving the specific, often unglamorous problems that businesses and real people face every single day. Which, you know, brings us full circle, right back to where we started. We've just met the builders of these incredible new AI cars. They're faster, they're more efficient, and way more capable than anything we had before. But it leaves us with this one really fascinating question to think about. What new, completely unexpected traffic are we still not seeing just over the horizon?